turntables is one of the most common renderings you'll find yourself having to make in the world of CG. And for that reason, we wanted to add something to Hops to make rendering turntables a lot easier. Formerly, I would take the camera, add an empty, put a driver on the empty, and then parent the camera to the empty, and then it would just rotate in perpetuity. However, thinking over it a couple of times, I've realized that that's in a horn amount of keystrokes, and it'd probably be better if we automated it. So we'll press Q. And under the operations menu, there's an option for add camera. And when we add the camera, it will just add the camera, add the empty, add the driver. And if we press F9, we can actually see the settings that we get in camera rig. We can choose how many rotations happens within the frame range. We can choose if we get a bounce camera instead of a regular camera. We can also choose if we want it to be the active camera or if we want the actual active camera to remain active. And that's good just in case you ever want to uh, change between shots or anything like that. But for me personally, I always make it the active camera. The next thing I like to do after adding the camera is really setting up that first frame. So for me personally, I like to just kind of get a good vantage view and then just press Control Alt Numpad 0 in order to set the camera to that particular view. And then after turning off overlays, you're able to just let it play. Full disclaimer, uh, I set my frames to be 9,000. I didn't want to go over 9,000 for this, but I did set them to 9,000, which will result in the smoothest animation you've ever seen. One of the good things about drivers and cameras in the way that we have it set up is that if we were to lower our animation to be 250 frames, you can see that the animation takes place over 250 frames and will go continuously forever. So if you're, you know, in, like me and you like making looping GIFs that never show an end or a beginning, then this is the uh, way to do it for you. In fact, we can set it up to 120, you know, really depending on your time budget. Sometimes you want a turntable that is, you know, maybe 9,001 frames because, you know, I lied. I'm, I'll go over 9,000 for you guys. But if you set it up to something high and you just leave this rendering, you're going to get the most beautiful turntable just really showcasing your model the way that it wants to be shown. Alternatively to the general turntable camera, we also have the bounce cam. So normally I would select a camera and then I would shift G to select its parent. And then I would select the camera again in order to delete it, in order to clean it perfectly. But you could also just delete the camera. I mean, an empty is an empty, um, but it's also nice to clean things up behind yourself. So we'll just press Q. And with nothing selected, we also have an option for add camera inside the nothing menu. So we will just add a camera this way, except I will choose a bounce camera instead. And this will give us a bounce camera that will actually kind of jump between the beginning and the end a little bit differently than your traditional turntable and this is just something that was suggested by someone on Twitter that seemed like a good idea and if we lower our frames down to something like 600 and we just let it play you'll see that the camera will go in one direction and then stop and then begin going the other direction but it still has that continuous fill that you can come to expect from adding a camera from us using the add camera system but whenever it comes to just getting in there and just presenting your model, add camera is probably your fastest way to get there. In fact, just to um, you know, take this a step further, uh, another way that I like using cameras is to change between shots. So right here, things actually get a little bit boring. So if we go back to the beginning, we can actually select the camera that's inside the empty. And with our mouse over the timeline, if you press Control B, you will bind the camera to that marker. And so we can actually go here where things are you know, looking a little less interesting. And we can select our first camera that we never deleted and press Control B to set a marker. So even though the timeline's a little compressed, you can see that the camera changes from active camera to the secondary camera. And this is one of my favorite ways to work actually. In fact, with us in this camera selected, we'll just drag the PP up to get rid of the border and we will just, you know, work this camera. So, you know, we'll start zoomed in, we'll press I, lock rot, and we'll just pull it out at 500, to so something like that, and then I lock rot. And we can actually select the first camera, now that's within sight, and press Control B. And we've now, created an animation for this camera, and then at the end of the animation, rebound it to the initial camera. So if we go back to the beginning and we actually begin playing, uh, turn off overlays for this, we can see that the bounce animation will begin playing. 
and you know eventually it'll get boring and switch to the other camera which pulls out just showing us uh, kind of a more impressive way to look at this cube in fact if I really wanted to baby this to get exactly where I want it I would make it actually change cameras right about here that's as much blank face on a camera shot I'll tolerate and we can select the camera locate the keyframe for the movement and just move it over to match the frame so whenever it switches it still has that nice switch to it and this isn't even to talk about basically you know selecting these keyframes and changing the bounce interpolation to get a very specific result in fact maybe we want to change it back a little sooner no nope. maybe we want to change it back about there so i enjoy dragging these these shots out to just kind of get a good look at things and that's not even to say that you can select the empty and scale the empty on the fly in order to get some really interesting shots as well you know we're not going to mess with that shot but for this one let's say we wanted to turn this into a really um grandiose shot um, where we um you know zoom in on that beautiful detail so we'll set a scale keyframe and right about here we'll zoom in and press I and set a scale keyframe. So once it transitions back, it will begin this jump to here, where then it can turn away. And right about here, we'll keyframe the scale. And right about frame, um, was this frame 900? We could press Alt S and just set the camera back to what it's supposed to be. And we could press I, set our keyframe. And even though our animation is set up to be only 600 frames, it'll never get to where we're looking. So I'll press Control C to copy my current frame and we'll paste that in the end frame. And if we play this back, it'll be a slightly different animation because part of our cameras are being driven by drivers, which is based on the frame end. And then we have our other cameras that are just placed in the 3D view for us to mess with on, at our own whim. So we just let our animation play back and that is one sexy way to show a cube. In fact, I'm about to grab this cube, take it home, and begin taking even more photographs of it. Maybe slap some lights on this baby, but you know that's a talk for another day. But I just wanted to do a video just kind of giving a cursory overview to blank camera or ad camera in hard ops and how to get started with it. Just one of my favorite ways to create a quick turntable and just show these cubes the way that I want the world to see them. In fact, as I look at this shot, it makes me want to uh, really record a screencast of that just to post on the Twitter. So. You know, let's go ahead and do that using ShareX, my favorite screen grabbing utility. And we'll just let this animation play while we catch a recording on the way out. 